All right, welcome to the all new V Network Radio. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, we're just uh, getting ready for our interview uh, phase uh, one of our interview uh, for tomorrow night uh, happening on tomorrow night. Uh, we're asking everybody, everybody on tomorrow night to tune in uh, Facebook Live. We're going to have a national recording artist. Uh, he's an R&B uh, artist, Antonio Kershaw, as known as A. Marquise, born and raised in uh, New Britain, Connecticut. He's an R&B singer, producer, and songwriter. He also is a music instructor from Pyramid Academy. He, his musical inspirations are Neo Tank, Boys to Men, and many, many more. So next week, we ask you to tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in. Next week, um, actually tomorrow, <laughs> tomorrow night, tune in. And uh, we're going to be here live uh, talking about uh, the music industry. Uh, we'll be talking about industry talk, um, talk about artistry and music. Um, you know, myself as being a musician, I know how it is uh, being a musician. But first, I want to uh, introduce our, our, our producer and who is our uh, program director, Lakia Siobhan Leitner. Good evening, everybody. All right. And thank you so much, Lakia. Um, and I'm the music director and uh, program director for the gospel division. And uh, Lakia is the program director for the R&B uh, uh, smooth jazz series uh, uh, and so I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for tuning in right here on the V Network Radio I um, want to thank you all once again uh, we want to invite you all on tomorrow night tomorrow night tomorrow night our first segment of, of the V Network uh, Radio interview segment um, on tomorrow night we're going to be talking about the music industry talking about artistry so all you musicians, all you artists that's out there, uh, producers, recording, uh, uh, companies that's out there, tune in. We'll be live on t tomorrow. We want you to chime in on, we're going to have questions and answers se sessions and um, talk about the music industry, um, how we can um, make the music industry better. Um, I'm so proud of the gospel division because a lot of gospel artists um, are coming out with a lot of new music with the COVID-19 happening. You know, a lot of artists are not working right now, but they're, they're doing overtime working in the studio, creating music. They're writing and creating music. So that's a great thing um, to see. Um, uh, the gospel artists, and I want to give applause to all my gospel artists that's out there that's doing it and doing the recordings. Um, and I can speak for the gospel industry uh, when it comes down to the gospel industry. Um, but Lakia, tell us a little bit about what's going on in the R&B, smooth jazz, urban, urban mix industry. Well, thank you, Donna. Well, first thing, a lot of the R&B and jazz artists, they're actually doing songs about the Black Lives Matter movement. That's the, that's what the uh, songs are about right now. No one's doing the love songs that we really, you know, love. Mm -hmm. Everybody's doing uh, music on Black Lives Matter and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I think that's really, really important for mm -hmm. them. How important is it um, that, you know, these artists are doing uh, songs that's relative to our uh, nation and the issues that we're facing in our communities. Uh, how relative is that now? Do you think that's important or not important? I think it's important because, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist, you know, you have to uh, give yourself a voice mm -hmm. and also give voices to other people as well. Right. And if you got race, you know, you definitely got to do music on that, you know. Mm -hmm. You got to do it for your ancestors. You got to do it for other people's ancestors. And just being a, a so-called American citizen, it's important to do music like mm. that right now. And that's one thing about the gospel artists. Um, they're doing that also. And uh, I can recall one um, artist named Felix Hill. Um, he is doing artists, uh, doing music about relative to what's happening now with the George Floyd case. Um with uh, different cases that's happening in the United States. And so I think that's great, you know, to for the artistry 
you know, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s music, um, that's how, you know, the artists express themselves, you know, through their music. And I think uh, music is uh, artistry, and you can express yourself through the music. Now, what what do you say about that, Lakia? I agree you know, with you. I agree um, with you, Donna. You know, you had uh, different uh, artists back then. Curtis Mayfield. James Brown. James Brown, uh-huh. Yeah. Isaac Hayes. Mm-hmm. You know, and they, they, they brought some of the great music, mm-hmm. you know, uh, back in the, you know, 70s, 80s, you know, era, 60s, 70s, 80s era, you know. And a lot of times they expressed, uh, talked about the war. Mm-hmm. Look at, um, um, what's the uh, Jamaican artist name? Um. They talked about the war. Mm-hmm. Bob Marley. Bob Marley, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Vietnam War. And that was during that age, during that time. Um, I think, it, you know, um, music is a feeling and then it's, 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 it's an expression, mm-hmm. you know, and it's music from the heart and soul. And so a lot of these artists, what they were doing is they were uh, pouring out the heart, you know, uh, relative to the, um, you know, events that was taking place. You know, during that time, you know, even uh, look look at Stevie Wonder, yeah. you know, Stevie Wonder, mm-hmm. uh, Michael Jackson, they all they all presented music during that era and time, you know, um, and and so glad to you know have ha- have those artists come up, and we were brought up on that type of music, you know, that 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 feel good music, you know, mm-hmm. and it was great to see those different uh, artists, and now. For the younger generation that's coming up, who do we have for the younger generation, Lakia? Uh, we have like Trey Songz, we have mm-hmm. Usher, mm-hmm. Uh, we have Tiana Lee, um, we have her. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a lot of artists out there, right? You know, that that's you know just talking about what's going on in our yeah. day and age. Yeah, and so I think it's so very important um, for the different artists today to uh, bring on the music. You know, bring on the music. Um, you know, uh, talk about the different, you know, eras of music and talk about, you know, what's going on now in the music industry. And so it's great to see that happening right now and nowadays uh, bringing on the era of music. Um, but, uh, you know, tomorrow night we're going to be going live. And once again, I want to say um, to all of our viewers out there, we're going to have a special, special guest come in um, for our first this will be our first uh, interview um, portion of V Network Radio, and we'll be talking about uh, music. We'll be talking about the um, the industry talk, um, artist music. We'll be talking about, and you know, I think it's very important because a lot of times the artists they don't even know the business, you know, mm-hmm. and so they're you know out there singing and they think they're singing and you know going out playing, you know, and. Meeting people is is good, but I think what a lot of programs that's on the um, Facebook Live and a lot of um, you know different programs that I look at, if we don't take time out to talk about the industry, talk about like the recording industry, you know, uh, uh, songwriting. We don't talk about that. How can you go about uh, you know uh, writing a song and uh, getting it published, you know, through uh, the different agencies, uh, BMI, CSAC, uh, different agencies. I think that's so very important that artists need to know um, how to go about doing, you know, those different things. Um, what if they will write a song, you know, uh, some somebody have a producer, you know, that produced their music, um, you know, uh, you know, and things like that. And different artistry, you know, musicians, you know, getting credits uh, for, you know, your musicianship um, when it comes down to uh, the CDs and uh, making music and things like that. I think it's a great opportunity for um, everybody to, you know, make sure that they understand the different industries and, you know, a um, little bit more. And so we nowadays you, we talked about, um, you know, the past. Uh, present and you know uh, what we want to talk about now is about about you know the music that's presented now you know about what's happening today with the George Floyd case and uh, the different other cases that's taking place all the way around the world one thing 
I'm I'm glad about it is that they've gone and uh you know different states and different cities have gone out and um you know protest you know in the different cities and I applaud you know those individuals for taking their time their time out to go out and st- uh, take a stand you know some people uh, wasn't able to take a stand on natural ground but some people you know did it from Facebook you know I, I saw so many different lives uh, live feeds and I saw uh, so many people chime in on you know the uh, different cases and the reason why they were protesting um, and, and marching you know I've seen so many different people you know do that and so what do you think about that like here? a good idea uh, what you presented and also it was a lot of petitions out mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have people taking down um, statues as confederate. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. They did it. It was legal and some some people and then illegal for some people. So mm-hmm. that was that's going on right now as well. Mm-hmm. And I think that's good, you know, that they're taking down these confederate um, yeah. statues. Because um, this land is a Native American. If you're going to put a statue up, put it of Native people. This is their land. That's right. That was stolen from mm-hmm. them. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I appreciate, like I said, some of the music that uh, uh, different artists are presenting right now. And I, and I think what I want the music made by Felix Hill in the gospel industry. Uh, Felix Hill, he uh, did a uh, Don't uh, I Can't Breathe, as the song says, I Can't Breathe. And uh, it's a new uh, project that he has. Uh, which is great, and uh, a lot of new projects happening in the gospel industry, and I'm so glad. Yeah, I, I say I, I want to say again, I'm so proud of the gospel industry, um, and what they're doing uh, for the gospel music, uh, and I'm, I, I appreciate the gospel industry. And uh, Lakia, yes, um, you talked about the uh, you had some artists that you wanted to talk about today. Um, well, I would have to say, uh, you know, like uh, Trey Songs. He has a new song. It's called um, How Many Times. Mm-hmm. And the visual for the video is awesome. And also, he did a live as mm-hmm. well. Also, Usher, he did a song too titled Cry. Phenomenal song. And I believe um, you, 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 you had a post. You had. You posted that on the V Network Radio. Yeah. So if you haven't gone and seen that video, that video is by who? Trey Songs. Trey Songs. Mm-hmm. And what's the name of it? Uh, it's called How Many Times. How Many Times. Yes. Okay. And um, and it talks about, what does it talk about? It talks about the Black Lives Matter uh, mm-hmm. movement. It also mm-hmm. talks about uh, police br- brutality. Um, also, it shows uh, the people that were killed. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Very, very um, touching video. Yeah. Yeah, for those that haven't watched it, um, click onto the link onto the V Network radio page. Uh, I think myself or Lakia, uh, she posted um, that particular video. We both posted it. <laughs> you, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Yes, and so go out there and take a look at that video, and it's a touching uh, song by Trey Songs. Uh, I think he did a great job, you know, um, I had some questions about, you know, the video, the opening of the video and, you know, the credits and different things like that, I think. Uh, but to each their own. But I guess he wanted to, um, you know, create something that was real mm-hmm. and that's going to, you know, take heart, mm-hmm. you know, to the people, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think that's what he wanted to do. And he did get that message across and I, I saw him. So many different, you know, different individuals um, that were murdered in the different cities. Um, and I think he did a wonderful job uh, at the footages and the video piece and then his music, too. He, uh, I can hear the expression in his voice that, you know, he, he really meant, you know, what he was singing about. And what the video was uh, portraying. What do you think about that, Lakia? I agree with you, Donna. And what was your best um, parts of it? I think the uh, when they um, uh, showed the bland lady, it really touched home. You know, the lady that was killed in um, by the police officers in Texas. 
um, I think that um, that particular video portion um, hit home. Um, the Freddie Gray um, back in 20, 2014, uh, he was murdered. I think he was one of the first uh, few cases that, that took place, you know. I mean, it's been happening all over the time, but, you know, during this, um, during the late uh, 2014, uh, the Freddie Gray case is really when it really um, hit home, you know, to people. Um, you know, police brutality and has been going on since day one. And so I'm telling you, uh, with these, these artists' music is so great. Um, you have something else you want to chime in on, on the video piece and what we can do as a, you know, community, as artists, as music artists, um, in the industry, what can we do? Um, well, you know, I, for my, my thoughts on the video, the family, you know, mm. they're hurt, and, mm -hmm. you know, it's just so sad, you know, right. that their loved one is killed, yeah. you know, because of the skin color, Okay. you know, yeah. it doesn't make sense at all. Well, I, I'm telling you, it's, uh, you know, it's very, you know, disheartening when you see, um, um, you know, this is happening in the United States. We're supposed to be setting an example all over the world, mm -hmm. and here we're still uh, fighting um, against racism, uh, stuff that happens in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, in the 60s, they, 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 um, they uh, put out dogs on us, they... Uh, put tear gas on us, put the fire holes on us, you know, but we uh, still were able to stand and to be able to protest. You know, I think the best way that uh, individual can, um, you know, uh, you know, protest, and I'm talking about all of black America, is to and individuals that support black America, um, is to make sure you take that dollar bill and not go and use it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like, um, you know, back in the 60s, 70s, uh, they boycotted the bus, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bus boycott, you know, and, and it hit the, the towns very hard. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to start thinking about taking monies um, that we have. Um, and if if a million if a million men could go and march, think about a million women mm -hmm. <laughs> can go. If they a million men could go and march to Washington. And think about a million women can go. And just think about if they each can uh, pledge $10 each. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just think about all that money that can be used uh, for, you know, uh, black America and to produce jobs, pr produce banks, um, produce um, businesses in our communities. Mm -hmm. I think that would be uh, awesome. If, uh, if 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 Black America and people that support Black owned businesses and Black owned companies mm -hmm. can start supporting each other, mm -hmm. and sh and uh, we talk about the the Black on Black crime, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I love it because Ricky Smiley said it best. He said, "I support." He said, "I support the Black Lives Movement," but he said, "What I don't support is." Uh, black on black crime that's happening in your inner city. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, it's got to stop that black on black crime uh, in our in a, and we got to be able to take that money that is produced in those different towns and different cities and those different areas and channel it back into something that's positive. Just think about all the money that is spent um, in all these different things. All that money could be channelized and to uh, to create, you know, jobs, houses, uh, community uh, development, you know, in the communities. Yeah, I think that, that that would be best. And what do you think about that, Lakia? I agree with you, Donna. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a Facebook um, uh, person, that Aubrey Phillips. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Elsie Jenkins, thank you for joining. MJ Hill, CN, thank you. Uh, Jane Chappelle, thank you for joining. Hey, you know, we're talking about uh, industry. We're talking about the music industry. We're talking about um, how it's related to um, what's happening now. Um, it's hitting home. A lot of the artists are 
uh, what they're doing is they're creating music and channeling uh, on the things that are happening on today, the, today's events. Um, there's a lot of um, gospel artists that are creating music um, that's presenting like for the George Floyd case, you know, and uh, all the different cases that, that is happening. They're creating music. Um, and then, Lakia, you said there was a couple artists in the R&B field, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And you, you named those artists? Yes. Uh -huh. And what are some of the artists that you named? Oh, okay. And I talk made, a little bit about that. Okay, I already discussed her songs. Uh, also, Usher has a new song called mm -hmm. Pride. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal song. Mm -hmm. And there's another guy named Jay. I can't think of his last name in the, um, mm -hmm. in the R&B field. That's creating music. I'm telling you, and I'm so very proud of our gospel industry. And I see one gentleman that's out there, James Chappelle, the third MJ. I'm telling you, these guys are great. They're uh, producing music, and I want to see um, uh, even more of the gospel industry. And I, I can talk on the gospel industry. <laughs> I can talk on my gospel industry. I don't know about your R&B industry. <laughs> But I could talk about uh, the gospel industry. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, they're, talk, they're talking about relative of what's happening today. You know, and then back in the day, we talked about, you know, um, the James Browns, the uh, Marvin Gaye's. And look at, look, look at that, what the song um, Marvin Gaye wrote, Brother, 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 What's Going On? You know, mm -hmm. things that happened during the times. Um, uh, Curtis Mayfield, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, who else? Um, Isaac Hayes, mm -hmm. um, all those different artists, Michael Jackson, mm -hmm. and, you know, he talked about We Are The World, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, he did a song called Black and White, Black and White, yep, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, uh, Stevie Wonder, mm -hmm. he talked about, I mean, we had some, we had some great artists that produced some great music for the time, you know, um, and, I think it's relative. Do you think uh, that music artists should? Uh, do you think music artists should create music for the time, like you know, of uh, about what's relative to this time? Yes. How important is it? For it's them? very important, especially when you are that particular race that's targeted. Mm -hmm. It's extremely important. Right, and I forgot to. Ar Aubrey Phillips said that. Money has made changes, and even in this day, that's true. Money has made changes even into this day. You know, we got to make sure that we spend wisely um, in today's market. Make sure that we spend wisely and channel our money into places that we know is going to uh, help, you know, in, in the industry. I think that's, that's one good thing that we should do. Um, I love artists, a lot of different artists, uh, quartet artists. Um, I think quartet, you know what we need to do? Quartet artists need to come out with a compilation, need to come out with a compilation CD. You know, we need to come uh, now. There was a, uh, com coming together all in one a CD, um, that was done a while back. They had. Slim and the Supreme Angels, they had the Maya Clouds of Joy, they had um, the Pilgrim Julie, different artists, they all came together as one. Um, and they made a couple compilation CDs. Um, and then also Malico, Malico Records, they came out with a compilation CD with the different artists um, in it. And I think that was great. And when the different artists can come together and make a CD and let's make an art a CD about the time, you know, about the uh, time that we're living in. I, I'm 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 all for that, you know, um, to see that. Um, and I know as gospel artists we can do that um, on on the gospel side. Uh, what about the R&B side? You think the uh, R&B artists they can come together and uh, come together and make a, a compilation CD about the time. It's possible. Look at what, uh, well, it hadn't been done since Michael Jackson. <laughs> it's, did hope. The, it's hope. It, did, did the <laughs> We Are The World mm -hmm. <laughs> album and then tour. Mm -hmm. And then how long did that um, 
last, you know? Right. Um, and so did they keep that up? No. 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 And so that's the thing about it, you know? I think we can uh, come together and um, do a compilation CD project with the gospel industry and talk about the times that we're living in, you know, and then take songs and record songs about the different time that we're living in uh, today, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that that would be a, a great thing that we could do. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier is that, you know, we got to talk about industry. Let's talk about um, how we can uh, build an industry, uh, our own market, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they have the, 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 uh, you know, the different contemporary market, you know, they're in a different gospel industry. Um, the quartet market is in their own gospel industry, you know, then you got some solo artists that's in the gospel industry, but they, they, they claim that the gospel, um, is, you know, with the choir, traditional gospel music. You know, they don't consider themselves as a, a, they separate themselves from the quartet market. You know, they think quartet is a market all by itself, <laughs> you know. And I think what we should do is, uh, you know, we should have our own market, which is quartet, gospel, uh, you know, traditional gospel, contemporary gospel, all in one market and create that one you know, market for all the different artists, not just, uh, you know, just one or two artists, you know, uh, the contemporary, you know. Um, and what I'm seeing now is that a lot of contemporary artists, a lot of contemporary artists with the contemporary music, what they're doing is they're crossing over, they're, 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 um, they're adding a little quartet flavor into <laughs> their music. <laughs> they're taking a little bit of quartet and adding it into the, contemporary and what they're doing is they're, they're gaining um you know viewers they're gaining listeners by you know adding a little touch of quartet into their music but then they don't want to be in the quartet market they want to be separate from the quartet market you know and then look at what the uh rb artists doing what are the rb and the artists doing huh Crossing over, crossing right? Over, they're, right. They're, they're doing a little crossover music. Yeah. They're, they're talk about God a few bit, uh, a second or two in the song, uh -huh. and then they want to be uh, put on the gospel charts and the R and B charts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I think um, you know when it comes down to uh, the gospel music, you know, the quartet gospel should not be in its own. Uh, in its own world, pretty much, we should have our own awards. We should have our own, you know. I mean, and include different, you know, genres of music. You know, you know, actually, the court to in the gospel industry. I think, yeah. I mean, if the R and B can do it, and the R and B your your field can do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and they can do all the different genres of music, then be able to jump over and cross over, and then uh. And then come back. I think, you know, that's that, that's something that the uh, quartet industry could be able to do. So that we can have our own industry within quartet and also include the uh, uh, gospel, uh, traditional, contemporary, different artists and things like that. I think artists need to be versatile. I think artists out there need to be versatile when it comes down to their music, you know. Um, one of the things that get a lot of different quartet groups is that, uh, where the contemporary artists could come in and what they could do is, um, they'll, they'll be able to do different variety types of music. A lot of quartet artists, what they'll do is they'll just do that one direction, you know, that one direction singing. They, they're not hip to uh you know producing different types of music you know for the time mm -hmm. they're not hip on they just uh headlong into doing one direction music mm -hmm. and they think that they can um you know come in and then be successful by just doing that one straight quartet <laughs> the first <laughs> second and third run <laughs> that's it <laughs> uh, music 
I think what people have to uh, do is be able to, number one, be able to come in and do some quartet music um, and do a variety uh, types of styles and the variety types of uh, uh, music, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. when it comes down to quartet. Mm -hmm. Be versatile, you know, when it comes down to the music. I think that's, that's the key right there. Mm -hmm. You know, I was working with some artists and uh, some uh, songsters, and they were one-track mine. Songsters, you know, we had a producer, and he wanted to. We was uh, going to try to create, a, do an album, uh, and a, actually a CD, and uh, we got five, six, seven CDs. But you know, they were grumping and griping. You know, I don't want to sing this type of song. It sound like a country western song, or I don't, I don't like this type of feel of a song. You know, you got to be versatile with your music when it when it comes down to industry. You can't just be one track mind and say, well, I'm going to sing, you know, just this one song this way. And then all the other songs sound the same in the same key. <laughs> 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 and, and then and then and then you want to get a, a, a foot stomp and hand clop a song in the, in the key of E. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> you know, I think it should be a versatile type of, uh, um, you know, when you are artist, you got to be versatile. You know, when it comes down to your music. Um, and I think that's what people look at when it comes down to industry. They look at, can you be versatile? Are you able to listen? Are you able to um, listen at at what, you know, is being presented to you? Because sometimes you may be working with a different producer and the different producers can tell on your style and say, hey, you know, I want you guys to go this way with the song. You know, and it may not agree with everybody that's in the group, because like I said, you got one track mind people that that come in and say, okay, when you got one track mind person in the industry that don't want to do anything, you know, and want to do things their way, you know, when it comes down to the music styles. But when you deal with different producers, it's either you do it they say, or it's the highway, <laughs> hit the road, Jack. <laughs> And don't come back no more. You know, with industry. So I think that's uh, very important. Um, a lot of times in recording, too, you know, the guys, they want to get in and, you know, um, they want to, you know, get into the, you know, you got to practice, practice, practice when you are in a gospel group, whether you're a gospel choir, whether you're a solo artist, you got to practice, practice, practice. And I'm hoping that. We can get some uh, artists come on and talk about the industry. You know, talk about the industry side when you're going in to record music. Industry side, um, what's involved with uh, recording music, uh, songwriting? What's involved with musicians going in? Everybody knowing their parts. If you're a lead singer, you're doing the lead parts. If you background singer, you're doing your background parts. Um, you you got to go in uh, if you're lead vocalist sometimes you may have to go on by yourself for the lead vocalist so you you got to know the song uh background vocals you got to know the song in and out you got to know what the lead uh vocalist is doing as well as the back your own background parts and then also uh you got to be versatile some people can only sing one part but sometimes you may be able to sing two or three parts in the background you know you got to be versatile when it comes down to singing um and for the industry. And so when you go into the studio, it makes it a lot easier for you to handle it, you know. And then, uh, you know, I've been into some studio sessions where the lead vocalists, they they bombed out because they're on a live concert. And they think that they're on a live concert doing a live, you know, show in the studio. And it's totally different. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you can't do a live concert in the studio, and it, you know, when you're going into the studio, first of all, you, you're going to take up too much time, you know, and then, you know, an average song is, you know, three minutes, you know, three, three fifty to four minutes at the, at the max, you know, for average song, you know, um, and so you don't want to get out there and, and, and do a run on song for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and do a, uh, you know, you don't want to do that. Now, if you're doing a live, if you're doing a live uh, video, a live uh, recording, then that's totally something else different. But still, um, you know, that's too much right there. So 
industry. We talk, talk about industry. Somebody said, Aubrey Phillips. Thank you, Aubrey Phillips. Um, I agree with the main styles of gospel music being diverse. This is how gospel music was created. Yes, this is how gospel was created. I agree that gospel music having more diversity will be most successful. Yes, you know, you have anything you want to say about that? No. Uh, what about the R&B industry? Look here, since you handle uh, all of our R&B artists that come in and you 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 set up all the R&B artists to come in. Um, I, don't, I really don't have anything to say mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you covered it. Yeah. Because um, you, you're an expert in that. You know, you work in that field, so you will know. Yeah. People don't know that well, you're an engineer, you know. You went to college for it, so you definitely know what you're talking about. Well, yeah, I mean, here's the thing is that, um, you know, you being in the R&B industry, mm -hmm. um, you can you can chime in on some of the things that the R&B artists do. And that's the reason why we wanted you to handle the R&B side and I handle the gospel industry. Yeah. But one must, you know, have experience working in that. Uh -huh. you, know? you Yeah. You know, you're an engineer, so you know. Yeah. You know. Yep. Yep. But anyway, um, yeah, we talk about. Is there anything that we could do, um, more for the music industry, Lakia? Um, I would have to say that you know the artists today. You know, you have some that really show artistry. And then you have the other ones that's just trying to get themselves out there. Where mm -hmm. the artistry, they just have lyrics that's very disrespectful to women. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, you know, it's just a hot beat. You know, mm -hmm. and, and then they wonder why they're after one hit wonder, or they're looking good and that's why they're selling. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's no real artistry. So you have those different type of artists in the R and B field. Now, do you think um, the music? in that R&B field, um, and I can say, you know, the music in the gospel industry is, t is a little different. Yeah. You know, we, you know, because a lot of the, um, you know, gospel industry, we talk about music from the heart. Yes. Um, those songs about Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and how I got over, you know, my soul looks back and wonder how I got over. And they can sing. And, and a lot yeah. of R&B artists cannot sing. Yeah. All it is is a hot beat. Right, right. You know? And, one of the things that too, a lot of gospel artists back then uh, switched over. You know, they they switched over because of the money issue. Some of them, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. a lot of times the the money issue was you know because they were singing from town to town mm -hmm. and they wasn't making the money as the um um the R and B artists or the soul artists at the time, mm -hmm. um and so they. They, they switched over and some went to uh, soul music, some went to R&B, some went to gospel, uh, stayed in gospel, some went to blues, mm -hmm. uh, some went on to, you know, sing jazz music, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I think back then, they were looking at the money situation and they said, well, they had producers say, hey, if you come over this side, we can, you can make you know, forty thousand dollars just to record. Mm -hmm. You know, or fifty thousand dollars to record. And they're gonna go with that side. <laughs> yeah. With their better amount yeah. of money. You know. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to uh, to uh, to uh, sing um R and B music, but I, uh, I would never go. I had opportunity <laughs> as a musician. I had an opportunity to go and play uh, with R and B bands. You know, when I first started out, I started out with a street R and B band playing street music, and so. You know, during the times that they, they wanted me to jump over into the R and B industry, I would never do it. I would never do it uh, because I was so scared. You know that if I got back over on that side, I would never get back to the gospel side. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. yeah, so I stayed over into the gospel industry. Mm -hmm. You know, all all the years that I played in the gospel bands and the gospel groups, um, and and gospel choirs. I stayed over in the gospel industry. I never switched over into the R and B field, and I, and also that was against our t church teaching. You know, mm -hmm. you know if you if you were singing gospel, and in our group teaching, uh, if you were singing gospel, you didn't go and go back and forth and sing R and B, then jump back over to gospel, then jump jump back over to jazz music. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, no. If you're going to sing gospel, sing gospel. You know, you're doing it from your heart, and you're doing it, you know, you don't switch back and forth 
and going back and forth. No, that was a no no for us. <laughs> right. And you have a lot of people selling their souls for success. Yeah, yeah. You have a lot of that. They're doing these rituals. But that's ungodly. But here's the thing, you know, some people they, they um they're musicians, they say, Well, I'm gonna jump over into the um into the um into the R and B field and play because that's my livelihood, mm-hmm. you know. You know, and and to each their own, and um, you know there are artists that that do that, you know, mm-hmm. and that is part of their livelihood to go and play for different bands and uh, play instruments for different bands and sing for different uh, bands and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're um, content into doing that, you know, mm-hmm. um, but for me myself, I guess it's to each individual, you know, right. or what they what they would do. You know, um, you know, if you if this is your livelihood, and you're doing this twenty four seven. You know, uh, and you need to, you know, make ends meet. Then you, know, I say, whatever you need to do to make ends meet to support you and your family. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, when it comes down to you know just switching over to different genres of music, I'm I'm not the one that would do it. Um, you know, in the industry, so. Yeah, I mean, this is good talk that we're talking on tonight, and we're going to be having industry talk. I think we need a, a talk show that's going to talk about industry, about what's happening in the industry, and so I think that's why we're here. Hey, um, coming up on uh, tomorrow night, we're going to have a special, special guest. He's going to be coming out of New Britain. I want y'all to tune in uh, tomorrow night, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Uh, tune in tomorrow night. We're going to have a national recorder artist. Now, he's in the R&B field. His name is Antonio Kershaw. Uh, he's out of New Britain, Connecticut. He's a national recording artist um, in New Britain, Connecticut. And he's going to be with us. We're going to talk about his music. And he, we're going to talk more about the industry. Um, and I'll be talking about the gospel side because I'm proud of my gospel artist. <laughs> and and anybody that's out there that's uh, that's in the gospel industry, I, I'm proud of you all. Thank you so much for supporting our gospel artists all over the world. It's great. Thank you so much for supporting uh, the gospel music all over the world. And, yeah, we're going to continue to support. I see some thumbs up, all right, for the gospel <laughs> industry. Now, 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 how many uh, gospel industry we got out there? Let me see some thumbs up. Uh, how many R and B do we got now? I don't see no thumbs up for you. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of our gospel industry, um, and so we support one another in, in gospel music. Um, and let's talk about gospel industry. Hey, if you out there, and I want to hear what you have to say about the gospel industry, um, how we can make this gospel industry better. Uh, you could type in your um into your into the chat. Um, so, and, uh, Edward D. Barry Quinn, thank you for tuning in. He said, this is really good. Awesome topic. Yes. Yes. Awesome topic. Um, you know, we had some, and tomorrow night, tune in. I want everybody on this live tonight to tune in tomorrow night, 9 PM, 9 PM tomorrow, Friday night, Friday night, 9 PM. We're going to have a, a, a artist on national recording artist, Antonio Kershaw. Uh, best known as Antoine Marquise, he's a artist, a national artist out of New New Britain, Connecticut. New Britain, Connecticut. He'll be on with us. He will be talking about the gospel industry. We'll be talking about uh, the R and B industry. We we'll talk about the music industry. Period. Um, and talk about you know what we need to do um, in the music field by coming together. Um, and to have platforms like this platform here on the V Network Radio to talk about, you know, different topics. Some people want to understand more about the music industry, how to become a songwriter, how, how uh, to uh, get royalties for your different gospel groups and uh, royalties for your individual self um, and, be, and songwriting. And, uh, and so... People want to understand how to publish your music, you know, how to go on to record. There's many, many steps to go on to record. And I, you know who I got to get on is a good friend of mine, Jax MacArthur Jax. I got to get him to come on to uh, talk about the uh, 
uh, music industry because he's uh, been in both the gospel uh, music industry and the R&B industry. Uh, somebody say uh, R&B pays more, but more doors open for for me in gospel. Only God. Yes, Quinn. Yes, that is true. But like I say, you know, uh, that's what we talked about earlier, Quinn. We talked about um, a lot of times different artists, what they would do is they would go back they would sing gospel and then they would switch over to the R and B field because of the money situation. And then, and then once the money is out, they go back over the gospel <laughs> <laughs> to record. You know, um, and that's one of the things that um, a lot of artists they do. They they um, they in the gospel industry and then they switch back and and switch back over. And so that's something that you know that. That we have to do, and look here, you you can chime in and talk about some stuff. Why I, I I'm gonna uh, go on this computer here, boot up some more music. All right. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, what was I need to talk about? Um, you can talk about the industry, and the R and B industry, about the different artists that's taking place now. Okay. Um, um like Trey Songs, you know about him, and mm -hmm. um different younger artists, you, mm -hmm. the different artists that you sent, you know. The different music, Trey songs and Usher, Usher. Keanu Lee, uh huh, uh, her, mm -hmm. yeah, they have new songs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What well, and one uh, artist that I'm so proud of, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna play some of his music, is uh, he's a crossover artist now. Now he was an artist back in the day, and a lot of people know of his music back in the day. Um, uh, Charlie Wilson, <laughs> y'all remember Charlie Wilson? Yeah, you know, he did that song back in the day, Outstanding, <laughs> you know, yeah, Charlie Wilson. Now, he, he he's a uh, crossover, and he did a song, I'm Blessed. Y'all remember that song? I'm, let me let me play a little bit of this song by Charlie Wilson, all right? Uh, say, I'm blessed, all right? Uh, my prayer was I asked God to not to let the devil kill me out here while I was in the streets yeah. before I could get back. But I said, if you give me one more chance... At life and music, I promise you, I'm going to shout you out, and I'm going to testify, and we're going to have a little church up and down. That's Charlie Wilson. Waking up, thanking God, every day is feeling just like Sunday. Wife and fly, by my side, green light. Y'all remember that one? All right. Riding green, living dreams, just like the Bible. Yeah, Charlie Wilson. That's one artist that was a crossover artist. Um, Charlie Wilson um, was a crossover artist in, um, yeah, in gospel music. You know, we had so many different, uh, Aretha Franklin, uh, uh, you know, different artists. You know, Sam Cooke, back in the day, it crossover, you know. Um, and that's one thing that we talked about. We talked about a lot of gospel artists. They cross over to the R&B music, you know, and come in and uh, sing R&B music. But... You know, like I said, with myself in the gospel industry, in the gospel industry, if you're singing gospel, you know, I expect you to stay uh, rooted into the gospel music, stay right and stand still. Now, what do you think? 
say I'm not an artist. <laughs> I can't speak for them. Well, I mean, you know, um, do you think uh, uh, gospel artists should just stay in, in the gospel industry? What are y'all thoughts out there? Um, we got so many different artists, musicians out there. Uh, what do y'all think? If you sing gospel, do you are you expected to stay in the gospel industry? Or can a gospel artist switch over? I want to hear from all of our guests out there that's out there on today. I want to hear the guests out there about uh, the gospel music. Uh, we want to hear what you have to say about it. If you're in the gospel music, uh, do you continue to stay in the gospel music? Or can you switch over? I want to hear what you all have to um, uh, say about that. You know, when it comes down to the quartet gospel music, I know for myself in the quartet gospel music industry that if you're going to sing gospel, sing gospel. If you're going to sing blues, sing blues. If you're going to sing soul music, sing soul music. You know, all these different things. Make sure you just uh, do all that. Um, but I think what we should do is uh, stay in the gospel industry. Mm. Yep. So, hey, we're going to be talking about all these different things all right here on the V Network Radio every uh, Friday night will be coming on just about every Friday night, uh, with the exception of 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 um, you know sometimes what we do is we'll post what dates and times we'll be on. We we talk about the uh, gospel industry. We talk about the music industry um, happening, and so we want you to chime in every single week. We're gonna take time out to talk about the music industry what we could do to come together in the music industry, what's needed in the music industry, um, and go from there. I think this is great. All right? So, all right, um, Facebook, thank you all for our first edition of the V Network Radio uh, Music Industry Talk. Uh, we talk about uh, different things happening in the music industry. And don't forget, tomorrow night, we're going to have our guest Artist, we're gonna have a guest artist, uh, Antonio Kershaw, and his uh, stage name is Antoine Marquise. You can look him up, Antoine Marquise, on Facebook. He's out of New Britain, Connecticut. Wonderful uh, R&B artist. He'll be on tomorrow night. He'll be uh, covering the R&B industry. Um, talk about his music, uh, what inspired him, and in his music. Um, he'll be uh, uh, coming on on tomorrow night. So tune in, 9 o'clock p.m. right here on the V Network Radio. And we'll see you on tomorrow night, uh, Facebook. And thank you so much uh, for this live feed. And we're going to continue to uh, bring uh, more gospel music, bring uh, more contemporary R&B, jazz, smooth jazz, urban mix music to you. Um, right here on the V Network Radio. All right? All right. You have any last words, Lakia? I wish everyone a fantastic weekend. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. God bless. Bye-bye. All right.